Last time on Sailing Zatara. After arriving in Florida, we did some major electronic upgrades, got a new generator, and attended our very first boat show and finally got to see our new souped up high field go fast dinghy. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They told us off the line but I just let it flow away She may buy a boat and go sailing. Totally, in two years Yay. with Eric, gonna buy a boat, go sailing. These guys have inspired <laughs> me to want to do it sooner, but I got two kids that are 16. Yeah. Yep. We're in our hometown of Flower Mountain. Why don't you go sailing with them? We share with the other parents. The other parents, um, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, let's go back, honey bud. It's been tough to get things done while living a traveling lifestyle. Kate's been really wanting braces, so a regular dentist in Texas has an orthodontist that agreed to prepare Kate's Invisalign mouthpieces and hopefully ship them to us in Panama. And now we're going to go to the top and try to get open big. There'll be about 10 different replacements, and so once a month, we will be responsible for changing them out on our own. Yeah. And here's your after. That looks Oh, wow. Look at that. Whoa. That's insane. With the mandibular advancement, it's actually going to adjust that, and that's what Dr. Toe is going to build uh, into it. Okay. So it will actually bring the low. No, you can touch it. It will actually bring, bring the lower jaw forward. Come out just a little, mm -hmm. and then see how your teeth are going that's to That's how big my overbite is. That's you have a big overbite. Than I, I know. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. When we get back to the States, she'll get a new set of mouthpieces. It'll take a few years at this rate to get her teeth fully aligned, but Kate is really excited. She's been wanting to get her teeth fixed for a long time now, so I'm really hoping we can make it happen for her. Right, so we're gonna let you try them on, right. and then I'm gonna make sure that they're fitting really good on you, so we'll be doing some adjustments on those as well. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Whoa! Like I can't see the uh, buffalo, the buffalo, whatever yeah. you call it, the name, and I can see it. I can see it right now. Aww. That's Aww. awesome. That's awesome. I like those a lot. I do too. Really good. It's like using new technology or something. <laughs> this is thing. crazy. I never yeah, this really fit. earlier today for my annual checkup for bladder cancer. I don't know if you've watched our channel much, but um, I kind of shared with you a while back that uh, I dealt with bladder cancer from uh, 2005 to 2010. Recurring tumors and they would just take them out. So about every three weeks I'd end up in the, um, in the uh, doctor's office and inpatient under anesthesia getting bladder tumors taken out. They don't know why they kept coming back, but uh, so anyway, I haven't had any recurrences since 2010, so that's been nine years. Today we have got done at the doctor's and I got a CAT scan and everything, and there was a little bitty tumor that showed up. You can see. Oh. Did you need me to? No, it's fine. Does mm. it come? 
Excellent. What is that? What does that look like compared to like the previous tumors I've had? You probably don't know, but yeah, yeah, it could be something benign or an early stage of something. Okay. So definitely, just scraping that and getting a biopsy will give us a better idea. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, you want one more picture? Mm, oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time. Okay. And they're not sure what it is. It could be nothing. It's it, it's not typical of the bladder cancer tumors, which look like little uh, cauliflower or little pieces of broccoli in your bladder. And so anyway, we've got to schedule a, a biopsy. They're going to remove it. So anyway, that's where we're at. And uh, hopefully it's not cancer. They'll take it out and they'll realize that it's just a scar tissue or a cyst or something. But that's where we're at. And Anna's driving still, Jack's driving. They're gonna get their driver's license in a few days. And hopefully they'll let me film that. Throw a camera in the back of the car and film as they take their test. Anyway, okay, see you later. We'd been practicing for several months now and finally got to go take our driver's tests. No, I did not let mom record it. He's nervous, he's nervous. I'm nervous, we're both nervous for each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does the seatbelt work? Uh, uh, you know, it's a new car, we don't know. Oh, <laughs> Good job, Anna. All right, that's one down, one to go. Okay. You did it! Yay! Howdy. Isn't this a beautiful look? I'm getting ready to go back to surgery and have this little tumor removed in my bladder. And then we catch a flight um, at 12.30. It's like 7.30 right now in the morning on uh, Wednesday, March 6th. We'll be back um, at the boat this afternoon, so uh, hopefully all will go good, and I'll be uh, on the boat this evening, and we'll be setting sail in a day or two, tomorrow or Friday. We've got a provision up tomorrow, get some things finished, and then we'll head off back to the Bahamas and back on our journey. So, all right, hope it goes good. See you when I wake up. So the lesion in the bladder does not look like cancer. Good. Uh, we'll have your pathology next week and call you with the results, though, and, and it's nothing for sure until we know. Right. About pathology. Excellent. <laughs> 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 Leaving out there. Yeah, like yeah. that was political. Uh, you running for office? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you, Doc. We hey, appreciate you're welcome. it. welcome. <laughs> have a safe trip. Have fun. Thank you. This is Tay. She is due like any day now. Okay, maybe Are a you really couple months. Yeah. <laughs>
I got the dinghy today. I feel oh yeah, Ocean Master 420. It is the bomb. It is 16 feet depth here. It's in feet, not meters. I'm gonna change it. Yeah. So we bought our new dinghy. We got the new Highfield Ocean Master 420. This is the bomb. This is the go fast dinghy. To get you anywhere dinghy, no matter what the ocean's doing, get one of these bad boys and you're gonna be set. We worked with Highfield to get it set up just like we wanted. Nautical Adventures there in uh, Fort Lauderdale put it together for us. They uh, rigged it out right, put the chart plotter in and, and got her all ready to go, put our decals on and they even picked up our old dinghy. They're gonna sell our old dinghy for us. They've been great to work with, Nautical Adventures. And Highfield has just been a, just wonderful. The product, man guys, it's everything I ever wanted in a go fast dinghy. Of this thing. Can you get fuel here? Yeah. Jack, keep it off. Thank you. So Anna insisted on getting one at a shelter instead of a breeder, so here we are. So we're in Palm Beach, Florida. We have uh, got all our stuff done in Texas. We have got all our stuff pretty much done here. We got our new Go Fast dinghy. Yes, sir. High field Ocean Master 420. It is the bomb. It's got a 60 horsepower Honda on it. It actually weighs 60 pounds, 70 pounds less than my old, uh, than the old Zodiac uh, 420 with 40 horsepower into it. And we are fixing to leave uh, here at Rabovich Marine here in West Palm Beach and go out to the Anchorage. And then we're looking for a weather window to get to Bimini and then to Panama. And when I talk about a weather window, I'm talking about the seasons of cyclones. So the cyclone season is ending in the Pacific in April, May, June and it stays off until December or November, excuse me, November, uh, October, November. So the later we take off, the shorter window we have in the South Pacific to cruise. Some of our viewers ask, a lot of our viewers, why don't we have a wind generator? And the main reason we, have, we don't have a wind generator is I may put one on, a couple on one day when I get a solar arch built, but they don't put out enough juice to really justify the cost on a big boat like this. And they, they make a lot of noise we had one on our old boat and they're just not they just don't put out as much as, as you think now wouldn't be bad to have one don't get me wrong i'd like to have a couple when i build a solar arch but the solar you can get so much more solar on a boat than you can and get more bang for your buck out of that solar than you can on a, a solar a wind generator or a water turbine so we're waiting on ribovich uh tug to get over here they've got us in this little narrow spot and I want them to give us a tow out of here. There's a current right outside of the dock here, and they're gonna come over here and hook a tug up to the front and pull us out because I don't want that current. We're going out at slack tide, but the wind's kind of iffy, and there's just these multi-million dollar mega yachts all around us, and I just have like 10 feet on each side of me between two mega yachts, and I don't want to run into one of them because I'm not a real captain. How much are they gonna charge us to do that? I hope they don't charge me anything. I hope it's a courtesy to get me out of here because I don't really belong with all these mega yachts. <laughs> Point the camera right back there. There's one. There, right there. There's one on our backside. They're all. 
They're all covered in, uh, what is that, shrink wrap? Yeah. To paint them. So you can't even tell how big the boats are. They're just covered in shrink wrap for painting. As we wrap up the last few days on land for a while, we make sure to do some final shopping for parts and supplies and get all the provisioning done to last us through Panama and across the Atlantic. Oh my God. Yeah, this is the new handbag. For all the ladies who love handbags like me, this is what you get when you go on a boat. It is not very fancy, but it does the job. So, whatever. So much for Gucci and Coach and all the other brands. Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. This is my Louis Vuitton right here. Waterproof. Yeah. That's great. You're proud of that? I'm proud of it. He's proud of it. I'd be proud of it. I like that. And how much was that? 500 bucks? No, it was not $500. I don't know. I bought it online and I like it. I got it. It's Skogakust. Skogakust. I don't know, they don't sponsor us, but I do like the bag. So if you are a Skogakust uh, person, you can send me another free bag, it's awesome. Okay. Alright guys, we are headed to Eleuthera, Bahamas tomorrow. It'll be motoring most of the way. We got a light wind window. Pick up ourselves in the morning at 10.30, the last of them that come in. And right now we're going to need our last Americana food because we won't be back here for eight months. And uh, that's it. So hopefully we have good passage to Panama. It should be in Panama in about a week, week and a, or maybe two weeks, depending on the weather window. So, see you out there! Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Q&A. First question out of the box is from Unul Cardinal. Wants to know, what sails do we use, when do we use them, and why do we use them? So, Jack, when do we use the uh, asymmetrical? When we're downwind sailing, of course. Well, when we're downwind sailing. So if you were to draw a 360 degree circle from the, from the front of the boat, zero being the bow of the boat, the center bow of the boat, all the way around to the stern of the boat, 180 degrees, you have 180 degrees on starboard and you have 180 degrees on port. From zero to 90 degrees, when the wind is from zero to 90 degrees in front of the boat, we normally use our Genoa and we use our uh, mainsail. Once the wind passes the 90 degree mark and goes after the beam, then we start looking at our asymmetrical spinnaker or screechers or code zeros. And uh, we'll also use code zeros in light wind uh, uh, ahead of 90 degrees, but once we get past 90 degrees, most of the time we're using our asymmetrical spinnakers, and that's the sail we love because we love going downwind and it's just great sailing. Hope that answers your question and thanks for watching. Next question out of the box is from Epic878787. Wants to know whether there is a way not to do night shifts where we can set alarms, slow way down. You can do all of those things, but it's. Uh, uh, it's not recommended that you don't pop your head up and look around about every 15 minutes. If you're out in the middle of the blue ocean, chances of hitting something are slim, but when you're cruising around islands or you're doing a little 500, 600 mile passage making around islands or where there's lots of ship traffic, it'd be real uh, foolish to not be up on watch and, and do that. There are alarms to, that we do set. There's uh, AIS alarms and different things that we can set that warn us of approaching uh, ships and stuff like that. But once again, we always keep on watch and it's just something you got to do. And thanks for watching. I hope that answers your question. Sugan Channel asks, do we get bored of sailing? And what do you do about it when you do get bored to keep from getting bored? Jack, do you ever get bored? Stop After like a week or two, it starts to get kind of old. I mean, yeah. you read a book or watch a movie, play with siblings, play board games. Right. Find some boredom busters. Dream of a South Pacific mermaid? Yeah. 
That too? Jack's got a South Pacific mermaid. We're not going to name any names on YouTube, but she's down there waiting. He's trying to grow flippers uh -huh. so he can get there because they can't get across the Pacific fast enough to see each other. Yeah. You know who we're talking about down there. We're coming. Jack's the coming. He's got the hot shot electricity on me. He said, Dad, we got to get down south. We got yeah. to go to New Zealand. We got to get there. Do I get bored? I Sometimes I get bored, but most of the time I'm messing with sales, I'm working on the boat, trying to make it faster. I, I don't get bored very often, and if I do, I just start reading a book or watching movies. One of, one of the things that we, we get when we're in the city, like we just left the United States and we've been in Florida for about a month, the, we, we're getting so used to not having pressure all the time and just the anxiety and the pressure of, of sitting in a city and all that goes with it. We actually look forward to the boredom and the peacefulness of being out on an anchor with no distractions where we can go swimming. I love putting on scuba gear and diving down in the water and I'll sit there and that's when it's an escape for me and, and so I don't really get, I, I long for those times of boredom and, and tranquility. So that's why we're sailing because we want the peace of it and we want the tranquility of it and uh, I hope that answers your question. Stephen Hauser asks, how do we handle passports, visas and other legal documents? And I guess Steve you're asking how do we do that when we check into the country or just how do we store that stuff we all carry our passports on our boat we also carry backup copies of that stuff as far as uh, going around the world you just need to get uh, checked into the country and they'll issue the visa when you check into that country they'll issue that visa some countries require that you pre-check in and get the visa before you ever enter their country like Australia maybe New Zealand but uh, it's pretty simple to check into most countries. It's not very hard. You just take your passport and they, they give you a 60, 90 day visa to stay there and, and then you can do your thing. Vicky Mastriana asked, do we have to arrange for docking when we're at a port and uh, how do we do all that? So normally when we go to different places, we want to be on the anchor because marinas are very expensive. If you're going to a place like South Florida or a place in the Caribbean where marina space is limited, you probably need to call ahead a couple, two or three weeks and make reservations for if you're going to be in a marina. You don't have to reserve a spot on the hook if you're anchoring. Anchoring is free in 90% of the places. And so you just go find you a good anchorage that's protected from the weather and drop the hook and then use your dinghy to get to shore. And then that, you know, and then you got to find a place to dinghy ashore in busy ports where they have a dinghy dock or they allow dinghies to be tied up on their docks at marinas. Uh, we don't like marinas. We like to stay out in the middle of nowhere and drop the hook and, and relax and swim and enjoy that life. But uh, for the most part, if you're going to busy ports and you're going to be in marinas, you do have to make reservations if you want to want to have a, a slip available to you. And thanks for watching, Vicky. All right, so Jack had to go leave and take care of the boat. Well, I'm still here answering your questions. I want to do a shout out and say thank you to Randy Lee Blair. He made us these wonderful keychains at the boat show in Miami. One says Zatar, Go Fast Dinghy. I don't know if you guys can read that. That is going on the new Go Fast Dinghy, Randy. That will be on there. This is gonna go on the keychain for the for the for the boat. And Renee's got one. She's gonna maybe wear that as an earring. I don't know, a decorative piece. And, but anyway, Randy, thanks for making these keychains. These are so neat. I'll have these for the rest of my life. We love them. They're really good. I was so impressed by them. And thanks for watching the show, Randy, and supporting us out there. Tune in next time as we set off in some questionable weather. He barked up his breakfast. Ugh. And make our way towards Panama. Wow. <laughs>